Hi, this is Tim Dolbear at Eclectica Studios in Austin, Texas. I'm going to show you how to install the UAD 64-bit version into your operating system. That's a 64-bit OS, either Windows 7 or Windows 8, and set it up to be used with Sampletude or Sequoia in 64-bit. First up, when you install the UAD software, it's going to install into two different places. It's going to install into your Program Files folder, which is your 64-bit area, and your Program Files x86 folder, which is your 32-bit program folder. This contains your 32-bit plugins as well as any other programs or anything else that's 32-bit. The normal programs folder or files has all of your 64-bit stuff in it. It installs into both. If we open up the Programs file x86, you're going to see two different things down here to look out for. A Universal Audio folder, which contains all of the various different guts of the UAD plugin. If you click on the UAD2 plugin folder, you're going to see large DLL files. These are all 6 uh, megs, 20 megs, 30 megs. These are the actual guts of each plugin. So you never want to change these, you never want to touch these. Backing out of it, let's go now to 2 above, which is Steinberg. This is the actual Steinberg VST plugin folder. Have a VST plugins and power plugins folder inside it, and all of your 32 bit versions of your UAD2 plugins are inside this folder. Now, if you look, all of these have 63K in size. This signifies that these are the 32 bit plugins, not technically, but this is a way to differentiate since the names are all the same. So if you have a DLL pointer file such as one of these in your VST plugins power plugins folder, and it's 63, KB in size, you know it's the 32-bit plugins. We want to leave these all alone. So the ones we want to work with will be in the programs file, which is your 64-bit folder. Again, there's a UAD, or sorry, a Universal Audio folder, and right above it is a Steinberg folder. So open up that, open up the VST, open up the power plugins. These are all 68. The mono versions are 67. These are all the 64-bit plugins, so that's like a fail-safe. Looking and seeing that the size of it is 68 KB is going to save you and make sure you're working with the correct ones here. So, inside this folder, we're going to do two things. First, we can simply set up Sequoia or Sampletude to point towards this folder, in which case you will have all of these plugins shown in one giant list in Sampletude and Sequoia. Or, we can take these and categorize them, put them into subfolders, either here or somewhere else. And this will make it so you can have all of your compressors in one place, all of your EQs in one place, and make it a lot easier to navigate around. Something I wish UAD would do right off the bat, but they haven't done it yet, so I do it myself. Now, another thing I do is I don't put them into a VST plugin folder in the Steinberg folder in my programs files. I move them and take them and put them on my C drive in a simple folder that I call VST plugins. Inside here, you'll see I have everything split. The main ones that I use that I want to get to right away, my API collection, dynamics, uh, effects, as well as EQs and filters. I have my SSL stuff. Inside my SSL stuff, I actually have all my UAD stuff also. So anything that's SSL-ish is going into this folder. So I've separated everything like this, and then I point Sampletude and Sequoia to this folder. Now, the way to do this is going back into your Windows Programs folder, wherever it is. Give me one second. Windows Program Files. Going into this, into Steinberg, into VST Plugins, Power Plugins. I'm going to open up the Mono one, and I'm going to select all, and I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste this in with all the stereo ones. So that way the Mono and the stereos are together because they're signified with an M. It's easy enough to tell apart. When I divide it up, it makes it so it's easy to divide everything up. Simply paste this in, and you'll see you know, UAD 4K bus compressor M for mono, standard one, 67 KB and 68 KB. These are all of our 64-bit ones. Now I can take this folder, shrink it down. The VST plugin folder that I've created on my C drive, I'm going to open up in a new menu. And I can simply take these and copy them into the folders that I want copy or move completely. It's going to ask if I want to replace them. Sure, why not? 
And when I'm done, all of these will then be copied over into the folder, my VST folder. Now, one of the reasons why I like having this VST folder uh, be separated and everything and be in its own place on the C drive is I can set it up in my libraries in my favorite area so it has its own link. I can get to it very quickly because not only am I dealing with a bunch of different plugins that I, I from many different companies and I want to be able to find them easily, do maintenance on things, copy new versions in and stuff. I can have Sampletude or Sequoia pointing at one folder. In fact, I can have all of my programs pointing at one central VST plugin folder and inside this VST plugin folder, which is on my C drive, again, right here, I have 32-bit plugins from some companies and I have 64-bit versions from all the other companies that operate under 64-bit. So in my Dynamics, for instance, the Crush UBK1, this is a 32-bit plugin, but almost everything else that, that is in here, except for the floor fish at the top, is all 64-bit. So they can coexist together, these pointing DLL files, in one folder on my C drive and not buried under eight layers of files and folders. I can get to it very quickly. So, in Sequoia or Sampletude, this is how you set up the actual VST folder. Let's open up Sequoia. Hit Y to open up System Options. Scroll down to the bottom under Effects, under VST, DirectX, and Rewire. And I've only had to choose this one path, C, VST plugins, because I put everything and I keep everything in there. Now, another thing, remember, we copied just the 64-bit versions of UAD plugins into here. So we're 100% sure that only the 64-bit ones are going to show up inside Sampletude and Sequoia because we're pointing it at this folder, and this folder only has the 64-bit ones. If you point it at, at the Steinberg folders, the two different ones, with all of the different companies putting all of their stuff in there, not only will you have everyone's 64-bit and 32-bit version, but the 100 or so UAD plugins that you have, you will ha now have 200 or so plugins the 32-bit ones, no, noted as being 32-bit, and the normal ones, which are the 64-bits, all showing up when you click on Insert in your mixer. So it will take up beyond your full screen. It's, it's really annoying. So setting it up like this is definitely worth it. So I've signified the folder that I want. This is the only folder I want it to scan. And as soon as I hit OK, it scans that folder and everything is chosen. If for some reason you have already chosen other folders and you want to delete them and not have Sampletude look any further than just this new VST plugin folder, because remember, every time you signify a path in there, Sampletude saves it and will search that path. So if you've made this new VST plugin folder like I have, but you still have it pointing towards one of the Steinberg ones, it's going to scan there and the new, and the new VST plugin path. So let me show you how to get rid of it and refresh. If you go into, take you the normal way, programs x86 into the magics folder into either sample tutor Sequoia, so you're inside the actual program folder, you'll see a shortcut called program data. If you double click this shortcut, it brings you into a secondary folder that's inside sample tutor and Sequoia where we keep a bunch of different data. Down here at the bottom is a configuration setting. It's called VST Plugins INI. If you delete this file, it's totally safe to do it. When you start Sampletude or Sequoia again, it will rebuild this file, scanning only the VST plugin folder that you then signify. And it's going to go through and scan all of my plugins. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, down here, you'll see it go through and scan all of the different plugins that I have inside my VST folder. And that's it. It's now set up, and when you open up Sampletude and Sequoia in the mixer, you can actually see in the insert list of VST plugins, you will see all of the plugins now arranged with the categories that you've put together for dynamics and EQs and channel strips and whatever else you decide to put on there. So now everything's organized, and only the plugins that you've signified are in that folder, and they're now available to be used inside Sampletude and Sequoia. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, give me an email at tim at magix.net. Thanks.